fellow students and Dr. Kilpatrick, I apologize for the delay in me getting around here. Um, I seemingly don't have a remote for this camera and I'm just trying to make it work the best I can to, to get this done. Um, my name is Steve Peters and I'm going to be presenting my capstone project for you. Um, it is going to be over seatbelts and school buses. Do drivers think that they are needed? The problem uh, behind seatbelts and school buses is that at an early age, uh, from birth actually, parents delicately strap their babies into infant seats when transporting them in the car. So from the time they get out of the hospital, uh, children, kids, are ingrained, taught to buckle up. As toddlers, parents begin teaching their children how to buckle themselves in seat belts when riding in the family vehicle. It is a requirement for them to buckle up for their safety before the vehicle is even placed in drive. So it starts at an early age. The ritual of backing, uh, buckling up excuse me, has become a habit for both parents and children over the decades. They are taught that wearing a seat belt can save their lives in the event of a vehicular accident and seat belts increase the safety. Uh, there was a time I can remember when I was a child, uh, maybe displaying my age here, but when I was a child, um, I didn't buckle up when I got in. I wasn't taught uh, to do that. Uh, I can remember standing in uh, the front uh, uh, of a pickup in the seat so I can see. I couldn't see over the dash if I sat down normally, so I would stand up. Um, my mom had that natural mom instinct to, every time we hit the brake to stick her arm out and catch me. But, uh, you know, here I am all these years, all these decades later, I'm fine. However, uh, statistics have, have proven that seat belts increase safety and save lives in uh, vehicles. So, my question is, uh, at this point, is what happens when parents bring their students to the school bus? Um, it says here that it's their, it's, parents are expecting that their students will be entering a safe environment when they step onto that school bus. Um, what kind of message does it send when parents and children alike step on a school bus and see that there's no seatbelts provided for them? Now, uh, it's a fact that 80% of our nation's school buses are not equi equipped with seatbelts. Now, the lack of seatbelts on school bus buses can send a mixed message to both parents and children. The message to children could be that seat belts are not necessary in the family vehicle, so it uh, could possibly be reverting all that training and teaching that has happened since birth. And it also sends a message to parents that maybe their children are not safe when they're riding on a school bus. Kind of the history of the whole seat belt debate and seat belt um, argument is. Uh, started back in the 1960s. This image is from that era, maybe from the 50s, but it's, uh, it's pretty old, black and white. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the, seat belts, I mean, the seats themselves are just metal frame tubular structures. Uh, I can remember riding on, on some of these as a kid. Not that I'm from the 60s, but uh, buses last forever. Uh, anyway, the uh, seats themselves were just metal frame. I can remember riding on them and there was a metal back and uh, as you can see here this student has a knitting needle I guess you would call it um, which is totally dangerous in the event of an accident she could impale it herself if the driver had to uh, slam on the brake suddenly or had an impact with something uh, but the seats are designed um, not for safety they're just designed to have a uh, spot for a child to sit now the auto safety standard revolutionized in the 1960s. That brought um, seat belt as a standard in vehicles um, in the 1960s. Uh, when you, prior to that, seat belts were an option. Mirrors were an option. Um, and that evolved to what we have today with airbags and uh, vehicle protection systems and things like that. But this is where the seat belt and school bus debate began. And it is further fueled today, um, you know, we live in the information age, it is further fueled today by the immediate attention that is given to school bus accidents. Um, sensationalized, uh, the media knows that, um, that children are a hot topic, a hotbed, a good um, a story to run on the air, and it's good to sensationalize. For example, in this image, uh, it's just something I grabbed, 
It says live on five. School bus crash renews push for seatbelts. 20 injured in Streetsboro school bus crash. Um, you see that headline come across your TV, you're more than likely, if you're a parent, or uh, which many of us are, or you know, we've all been children, and we can kind of get to what it was like riding on a school bus. The background of this is that uh, at the national level, school bus crash statistics show that school buses, even without seat belts, are the safest form of transportation for our school children. And then closer to home, seatbelt advocates, including many parents, cry out for the mandate of seatbelts in school buses to increase student safety even further. Now I'm going to talk about the purpose of this study. Um, the purpose of this study was to determine if school bus drivers, specifically for the first Euless Bedford Independent School District, um, considers the students they transport are in more danger without the availability of seatbelts. Um, the government has voiced its opinion by saying that school buses are the safest form of transportation to school for our children. Um, advocates of seatbelts have cried out saying, hey, we want something more that's more safe. Um, you can't put a price on safety when it comes to our children. Uh, how do school bus drivers feel? And that leads us to the research question. I wanted to find out uh, if school bus drivers consider students they transport and uh, are in more danger without the availability of uh, seat belts. And more specifically, I had to narrow it down. The school district in which I uh, work in, do the bus drivers for my school district, the Hirsch Lewis Bedford Independent School District in Bedford, Texas, consider the students they transport in more danger without the availability of seat belts um, on school district buses. I apologize for the top of the slides keep bumping forward, but no, I can't fix that. The literature review. Uh, we'll start with compartmentalization. Compartmentalization is known as a passive restraint system that enables students to be pushed forward into the high cushion seat high cushion seat back in front of them during impact. As you can see here, the dummies, um, during the impact, they're, they're pushed forward and kind of down, rather than if it was a lower back, like in that black and white image I showed you, uh, the students could easily be, um, in an impact, pushed up and over that, uh, or worst case, into it, and uh, skull fractures and things like that could occur. Um, Compartmentalization, compartmentalization, it's hard to say. Compartmentalization was adopted in 1977. It was issued by the NHTSA, which is the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration. And it was uh, adopted in 1977, and it has been in place all these years. What is that, uh, 43 years now? Uh, no, I'm sorry, math's wrong. Almost 40 years. Huh? Um, compartmentalization has been the mainstay, the standard, for almost 40 years. Um, and it basically it says this standard establishes occupant protection requirements for school bus passenger seating and restraining barriers. The purpose of this standard is to reduce the number of deaths and the severity of injuries that result from the impact of school bus occupants against structures within the vehicle during crashes and student driving maneuvers. Uh, or student driving maneuvers, excuse me. The key here is uh, to re to reduce the number of deaths and severity of injuries that result from the impact of school bus occupants against structures within the vehicle. So compartmentalization effect effectively um, places children within a cocoon. That cocoon is the seat they're sitting in and the seat in front of them. In the in event of an, uh, a vehicular accident, a school bus crash, uh, it's designed to throw them forward and down into the soft cushion, um, cushion in front of them. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration also they put out the school bus safety statistics. Uh, student fatalities, the annual average during normal school travel hours. Okay, School buses are the safest form of tra transportation for children traveling to and from school. We already established that, we already talked about that, but here's the statistics, here's the percentages by numbers. Um, students are in more danger Traveling in a vehicle that is driven by an adult, 23% of the annual student fatalities uh, while they're being transported to school 
are done in a, uh, an adult-driven vehicle. Um, you can relate that to the family vehicle. That's the, the minivans, the moms taking them to school. 23% of the fatalities uh, are in, occur in those type vehicles. 58% uh, of student fatalities while being transported to and from school are done in vehicles that are driven by a teen driver. This may be a friend driving another friend to school. This could be uh, an older sibling driving their younger siblings to school. Uh, but 58% of those fatalities occur when a teen driver is behind the wheel. Now down here you will see that 1% uh, of the annual student fatalities that are being transported to school, uh, to or from school, occur in a school bus. So the statistics are just uh, uh, in very good favor for school buses. Advocates of seat belts uh, in school buses say that the cost of an implementation of seat belts is insignificant and the use of seat belt reinforces safety habits in the family vehicle or vice versa. We talked a little about that already. Um, the advocates say that we can't put a price on safety. It just can't be done. Um, if it, you know, saves one student lives, how can you put a uh, numeric a a nomination on that? You can't. However, everything costs money. So um, that's where proponents of seatbelts come in. Uh, identifies the reasons for the lack of seatbelts on many of our nation's school buses as liability, enforcement, expense, and funding. And what the liability part of it is, uh, if students do not buckle themselves in, who is responsible? Is the bus driver responsible? Is the school district itself responsible? Uh, or the, uh, the bus operator? Is, um, I don't know, is, is the, the county or the state, uh, who's going to be liable uh, for lawsuit in the event that if there is an injury or a fatality on a school bus because a student did not have their seatbelt on. Uh, enforcement. Uh, bus drivers are concerned, how are they going to enforce this? Um, in my district, uh, we have uh, 71 passenger buses. That's one driver with 71